Welcome to Volume 2, Episode 5 of Dark Arts Theater, with your host, Jay Thorne. This episode featuring director and filmmaker extraordinaire, Ed Sanchez. Hey, hey, issue five of Volume 2 of Dark Arts Theater. I have another return guest, uh, someone I had on my blog a few years ago. Uh, you all guys have know how much I love The Blair Witch Project. I've said it many times. It's one of my favorite films of all time. And so to have Ed Sanchez, the director of The Blair Witch Project, co-writer, come and talk to me about it was incredible. I had that on the blog, and I've had Ed back. And, man, Ed's done some incredible things. He's doing, uh, he's doing television work. He's doing more films. He just had a Bigfoot film come out that you should check out. We talk about a lot of this in the, in the interview. So... Uh, and, and, and really, most importantly, Ed has the most bitchin' beard you're ever going to see. So, hope you enjoy my talk with Mr. Ed Sanchez. Uh, yeah, so last time we talked, uh, you had just wrapped shooting uh, on your Bigfoot mo movie in Austin, and um, now here you're on the other side of it. I was wondering if maybe you could just talk for a minute about what that experience has been like from, from conception to, uh, to getting it out there. Um, you know, it was good. I mean, it was like, you know, I've, I've always you know, wanted to make a Bigfoot movie since I was a little kid. And, um, it just, uh, you know, I, I, I this is like actually the third Bigfoot project that I've been trying, that I've tried to get off the ground. And each time we've, we've lowered the budget and we finally hit the right budget point. Um, and, uh, we got to do it and we shot it a few years ago and, um, came out la last year, uh, limited theatrical run, and then it came out on DVD uh, earlier this year, earlier 2015. And, uh, yeah, the reaction was good. You know, a lot of people uh, really loved it. Um, I think the, the um, you know, the, the Bigfoot what is probably the best-looking Bigfoot that's ever been captured on <laughs> film or video or whatever the hell we shot it on, whatever you say these days. Um, and, you know, and that was, uh, you know, I'm really proud of that and, you know, really happy that um, I got to work with all the people that, that, that worked on the film and made that creature um, look so good. And, uh, you yeah, know, it was just, it was a lot of fun, man. It was, uh, you know, the it was compared to my last film, Lovely Molly, which, you know, was really dark and really depressing and for me is like you know i, I kind of went through this really dark time uh, making that movie and uh, just to go out and do a bigfoot movie you know just fun monster movie kids you know uh, young people being chased through the woods by <laughs> bigfoot it was just fun man and it was really uh it's a, it's been a great experience and uh you know so yeah it was it was fun and uh and i i mean i would love to i would love to make you know, a whole trilogy of Bigfoot movies. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I remember you mentioned that last time we talked. You had said you hope that this was the first of many. So uh, any yeah, numbers on that I yet? Mean, or? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I have other ideas. I definitely have other ideas. I have another um, script that's almost ready to shoot, a Bigfoot script. But, um, you know, just got to find the interest. So we'll see what happens. I mean, it, it might be something where we wrap you know, Bigfoot into something else, into maybe like a TV show or something. Uh, we're really kind of pushing on the TV front right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, so, you know, we, who knows? But, but I, I mean, I can, I, I can guarantee you all there, if, if there's anything I can do about it, I will make another Bigfoot movie or, or Bigfoot will make another appearance in one of my <laughs> films for sure. So, And uh, I, I think too, you had mentioned that the, the Weta people did, did Bigfoot, right? That wasn't any CG. That was, that no, was, it was no CG. Uh, Weta, the guy, yeah, Weta uh, from New Zealand, and then um, Spectral Motion from LA um, built the suit, and um, you know uh, Brian Steele, who was like a big, you know, creature guy, um, he played Bigfoot, and he did a, an amazing job. And is yeah, he he really did, and uh, and I think you mentioned too, you, know, you get the money shot at the end, you get to see. You get to see the creature. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, you know, to me, like, the, the big thing that I was always disappointed about in Bigfoot movies is that either they showed the creature, either they didn't show the creature, or when they showed the creature, it just, you know, didn't hold up. And um, when I first saw a Brian, Brian in the Bigfoot suit, um, I was, you know, we actually shot it. You know, we shot it on, we, we did all these camera tests, and I saw, I was like, holy crap, man, it looks it holds up 
so at that point I was like, all right, I think I can, I think I can get in there and real tight and, and, um, and show the, you know, show the suit off, <laughs> show the makeup off. Um, so yeah. And so for me, it was like a real happy kind of moment when I realized that, that, I, you know, that I had, I had, you know, probably the best looking Bigfoot suit I'd ever seen for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The, the enthusiasts are hardcore. So how, how, what was their response to the film and to the creature? It seems like they've really liked it. I mean, they, you know, a lot of people, uh, I mean, I get a lot of, um, most of the responses come from the Bigfoot people, you know, from the, from the enthusiasts. And, you know, and really that's where I made this movie for them. You know, I mean, like I, you know, I set out very early on to like, um, you know, respect Bigfoot, you know, as much as you can respect Bigfoot. But the idea, of, but, but respect the idea of Bigfoot, like not, you know, at least the idea that, that, uh, that, that I grew up with as it being a real creature that lives on earth it's not some multi-dimensional being it's not you know an alien it's not you know it doesn't have super hum it can't fly or jump 40 feet in the air um you know it's strong it's definitely strong like a you know like a gorilla and it can definitely kill a, you know hand to hand you got no chance against bigfoot <laughs> but um I wanted to keep it grounded in reality so it's it was really uh fun to see you know the people that um that take it seriously, really responding to it. And, you know, a lot of people say that's the best, the best Bigfoot movie ever. And it's a bet, you know, a lot of, it's the best looking Bigfoot ever caught on film. So, um, that's really what I'm really mostly proud of is the fact that, you know, they, uh, I didn't piss off a lot of the, um, of the Bigfoot people. Yeah. And you, you really did a, a masterful job of giving Bigfoot a humanistic element too. with, you know, without being a spoiler, there's a, there's a real story there and it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, he, he, I mean, you know, the, the, the creature has an, a, a character arc, which was, mm -hmm. um, you know, really, I think the, you know, one of the things that, that we wrote in the script, but we were like, you know, how do you convey that? How do you, yeah. you know, how do you, you know, show that? And, uh, and I know, and I didn't know if it was going to work, but, um, you know, thanks to Brian and thanks to John Rutland, the DP and, um, you know, everybody that involved in that scene, uh, the, the, um, the, uh, actor who I, for some reason, I can't remember his name. He's like a, he's a good, really good friend of mine too. But, um, uh, you know, we, we, we just came together in that little moment and, uh, you know, created something cool. And I, I was really happy when we finally, and in the editing room, it, uh, it really, uh, you know, we really messed around with it a lot. It was probably the it was probably the moment at the end was probably the moment that we most messed with, like most you know, tested and tweaked frames here and there. And I did like a little digital zoom, very you know like imperceptible kind of zoom at the end, and uh, just all these little bits and pieces to try to get that story, that little beat across. And I'm glad people, uh, you know, it's kind of an ex unexpected thing to have like a character, like a creature that has a character arc. Yeah. Uh, there, pro there aren't too many movies that, that where that happens. Um, and it was just cool because Bigfoot to me is, you know, is half human, at least, you know, it's, it's definitely a, a, an ancestor of ours, some kind of common, you know, cousin of ours. So I love the fact that we could convey this human kind of side of, of, um, you know, of, of the Bigfoot. Yeah, it definitely came across. Came across. And the other thing I noticed is you you did a really good job with uh, some of the limitations of the found footage genre in that you you know you went GoPro and you also yeah. addressed cell phones straight on. So um, was that sort of a, a very deliberate thing, or was that sort of a natural part of the? Yeah, story I mean, look, you know, the, the whole thing like cell phones have ruined horror <laughs> movies. You know, like you you know that's the first thing you have to do is get rid of the cell phones or get rid of cell phone cover, and it's such a cliche or whatever, but it's like. It's just, you know, it's just common, you know, like even, even, even when we did Blair Witch, people were like, well, why didn't they just use their cell phones? I'm like, well, the movie takes place in 1994 and they were students and I didn't have a cell phone when I was <laughs> in 1994. No, Plus, very few people you know, the did. cell phone reception was really shoddy back then. Um, so you have to always have to explain the cell phones away, you know? Yeah. And um, so, you know, you know, for us, it kind of made sense that there was no reception out there or whatever. And uh, and that was that, you know, and then the, and then, yeah, the GoPro, like, to, you know, it's like found footage is, you know, you're, you're, you're always dealing with the, you know, the logic issue of like, why the hell are they still shooting? You know, why yeah. don't they just throw the camera 
at the creature and get the hell out of there. So you know you kind of, you you know the whole idea of found footage is a very um, you know it's it's a fantasy. I mean it's a it's a you know it, it's it's just it's it's too lucky. You know what I mean? It's like too for oh you had the camera on right at the right moment. You were pointing at the right place and you happen to capture this. So um, it's definitely very convenient. So you always have to deal with that. And this, for me, GoPros was just you know it's what everybody's using now and you know it's it's it, you know it's just cool how you know you can put a camera anywhere so our whole thing was like okay these guys are you know we we built the idea of the of why they're shooting into the story as much as we could um and uh so you know but yeah it was exciting cuz you know I'd never worked with GoPros and it was you know there're definitely technical problems we had um oh. like we ended up using um the five D's like, like, like on the bike scene when they're, when he's running and the creatures after him or whatever, you know, it's, it's, it's a GoPro prop, but, uh. but really we, we put a, we put a five D, which is the smallest camera we could put on that, you know, on the actor's head, we rigged the helmet and, um, you know, so he was basically, you know, was basically, they were riding around with a big, you know, a five D on their <laughs> a helmet <laughs> Um, and then we just switched it around, but it, it definitely, I mean, we, we tested the GoPros, but the, we were still in the GoPro, the hero Two. Mm. I know that the new ones are like much better resolution and, you know, are better at night, better dark, you know, um, but they, the GoPros just fell apart once you, um, take, took the light out of it or mm. started moving and doing a lot of movement. Um, yeah. so, but yeah, it, 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 it's, you know, it's kind of the illusion of a, of the GoPro, yeah. but yeah, you know, for us, man, for me, you know, this was, you know, it was 15 years, almost 15 years after Blair Witch. And, um, we just, you know, I go, you know, found footage has, has evolved, you know, yeah. and we were part of that VHS two anthology, mm-hmm. which, you know, taught us a lot just about, you know, how, diff- you know, to use, go, you know, found footage differently and what, you know, the, the, the younger filmmakers are doing with found footage and, mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it kind of, um, you know, w- there was just kind of this thing going on and, 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 you know, found footage has evolved and we have, we had, uh, we put music into it. We put, um, you know, it's a 5.1 surround score. I mean, it sounds, it sounds, uh, it has an amazing, uh, you know, sound work by studio known the same guys that did lovely Molly. And uh, so, you know, we definitely, it was a movie. It's a monster movie. It just happened to be shot in found footage. There wasn't any kind of, like, pretense about, oh, you know, uh, it's, it's real or the footage was found here or whatever. No, it's just, it's just, you know, it's just these kids going off and shooting this misadventure and then we edit it together. You know, don't, don't, you know, that's, that's, it's a movie, you know, it's a, it's a, yeah. it's a piece of, it's a little piece of fiction, you know, so. Yeah, and it, it as you said, it evolved, and so you know that's not where found footage began, but that's where it is now. And if you enjoy that type of filmmaking, then it's a suspension of, of belief, like it, like any other horror movie, like it, like, it, like any other movie, you know. Yeah, yeah. There, there's there's always that level of like, okay, you know, you the the audience accepts the fact that you know Tom Cruise is a spy and. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You know, and it yeah. works. I mean, you know, but Tom Cruise is obviously not a spy. He's an actor and all that stuff. So, so the, but it, but it, there is one extra level, though, with found footage. You know, but I think the people that obviously enjoy the genre, that doesn't bother them at all. So, right. Um, you know, we just try to have as much fun with it as possible and try to, you know, for our limited budget, try to deliver, you know, as much of a thrill ride as we could, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And you did. Hey, I, I know you're a, a Ridley Scott fan, so I wanted to. I, I talked to Andy Weir earlier this summer, who wrote The Martian, and uh, nice. I, I wanted to kind of get your take on what the buzz was about that, and sort of what your thoughts are on on that upcoming film. I, ha- you know, I just saw. I, you know, I've like, I've got I've gotten um, very. Uh, uh, so for some reason, I just gotten really against trailers. Like I, I, I mean, I love watching trailers, but then I hate watching trailers because they ruin the movie. Yeah. You know, like, like they just, it's just like the marketing, you know, the, 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 the marketing of this, you know, like they're, they're trying to sell a product and they sometimes don't, you know, they're selling the wrong product. And anyway, from personal experience and from, you know, just watching trailers and, and being kind of disappointed. So I, I don't, like I saw, 
I was at a theater the other day and they showed the trailer like it was playing on the wall, you know, in the lobby. And I sort of caught, half caught the Martian. I saw the, you know, the Scott Free logo and then I saw Matt Damon and he's in on Mars. Um, I'm pretty excited about it, man. I mean, it's, it definitely seems it's like it's like my kind of science fiction, you know. Yeah. And even though from even though Prometheus was kind of a logic nightmare, like yeah. a, like you know, but that movie didn't make sense on any level. Um, it was still fun, and it's Ridley right. Scott, and you know, so and he you know does science fiction probably better than anybody. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm really looking forward to it, man. I mean, I, I I wish that um, Matt Damon hadn't been in Interstellar. Yeah. Even though I like that movie, I just it, it just almost seems like a like like every, like I don't know you know what I'm saying it's like it's like he 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 um, I don't know it's just weird it, it, you know what I'm saying it's like it's, it's it was too it's too soon yeah. for Matt Damon <laughs> to be playing an astronaut again who's you know stranded yeah. on a planet but yeah. anyway um, but yeah I think it's gonna be fun and I love Matt Damon and uh, it seems like it's gonna be a, a, a cool film. Yeah, I know. You know, Andy is a self-proclaimed uh, science nerd, so I think I, I know a lot of people were not fans of Prometheus because they felt like it was, you know, it had a lot of those those holes in it. But uh, but Andy is is very tight on the science, and I think it's going to be a more realistic sci-fi movie if that if that makes any sense. I'm really looking well, forward. Yeah, to it. Yeah, that's what I like about it is that it you know it seems like it's like um you know like 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 a, a sci-fi movie that's grounded in. In science and, yeah. and stuff that we understand, and I don't, you know, I don't think there's like a, there's like another presence, or I mean, who the hell knows? But <laughs> I don't think I don't know if there's going to be any surprise Martians or anything like that. But I just think I just love those survival stories, and, and you know, and I, I've, you know, uh, I've been a science fiction fan forever, and you know, the idea of like going to Mars is just, you know, it's it's like a such a popular trope, and you know, in in science fiction and. It's it's been done well, and, and I don't know. It's just like this this thing about colonizing Mars that is just something really exciting, um, and uh, it's, it's cool just to see any kind of any kind of real science where it's based on uh, you know on, on technology that you know that maybe hasn't been invented, but is on you know it's it's on the horizon. Because um, I hate science. You know, it's I hate the sometimes where like. Um, you know, like in, in science, and I can't think of an example, but like in a science fiction movie, like it takes, takes place like a thousand years in the future or whatever, then and they haven't f figured out the most basic thing, like you know, like I mean, people used to say that about Star Trek, like why is Picard uh, bald? Like they haven't, <laughs> they haven't, they still haven't figured out the, the cure for baldness, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, and that's a kind of a dumb example, but I I do I do like when science fiction. You know, when films and even, you know, take they, they stick to the rules. That's what I used to love about Arthur C. Clarke. It's like yeah. Arthur C. Clarke, all his stuff was was complete, deeply rooted in, in science. And then he kind of took the leap as far as like, OK, the, if this is true now, then in 200 years, this might be the reality, you know. Yeah, um, yeah I, I just love that kind of stuff. So hopefully, you know, it doesn't uh, disappoint. Yeah, I agree. I wanted to uh, take a quick minute, though, and make sure I asked you about uh, your, the stuff you're doing for uh, Dusk Till Dawn because I haven't seen it yet, and and uh, and and so I, I'm really excited about it, and I was wondering if you could talk about your involvement in that. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's this, it, it, it's the second season. Just started a couple weeks ago, and um, they did, uh, you know, I did two episodes for this season. I did one episode for the first season, and it's uh, you know, it's it's Dusk Till Dawn, man. If you like the film. Um, and you can kind of get over the fact that it's not George Clooney and Tarantino, and you know Robert is still very involved. He directs, uh, you know, two or three of the episodes every season, and um, so you know it has that feel. The 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 writers, uh, led by Carlos Cotto, is you know they definitely have taken the film as like their blueprint, but they are really expanding the characters and expanding the mythology. And it's just a fun show, man. And I, and I, um, Robert gave me a chance to direct one last season, which I guess was in December of 2013. And then they asked me back for this season, which was pretty cool. Yeah. And I, and I love, you know, I, I shot exist in Austin and I've shot, you know, now three episodes of dusk in Austin. And I, it's one of my favorite places to shoot. And, uh, you know, Robert has a great system down there. Um, just a lot of great, you know, just the crews are fantastic and very friendly and, and, you know, it's, it's a very close-knit family. Um, 
and, uh, and you know, and it's just a great thing to do. And all the you know the actors are all cool. It's like one of those weird shows where like the the um, you know the the actor the actor group that they got are all you know they're also really nice people and mm-hmm. you know um, so it's it's just a joy to go down there and do it, man. And I hope to uh, I hope they do a third season and, and uh, I hope they invite me back. Uh. I'm sure they will. <laughs> it's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. So, uh, you know, as, as we kind of wrap up today, I was wondering if um, you had anything you could share as far as, you know, what's next for you? What's on the horizon? Do you have any projects in the works you can kind of talk about? Um, you know, I can't talk in detail about really anything, but we are doing, you know, um, my partner Greg and I are um, really pushing toward uh, television. Mm. We, um, you know, I'm directing more television and, We've kind of made a we we kind of made a like I think like early last year we made the the whole thing of like you know we, we were like okay like we do we just got to get a TV show on the air we got to get another yeah. TV show we did it we did TV right after Blair Witch we did Freaky Links and we did the reboot of In Search of that I don't know if it ever aired it, it kind of turned into a legal disaster there at the wow. end but um you know and 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 both those experiences the freaky links and the in search of kind of just soured us towards television because you know it's just a different thing we're used to making our own calls we you know we we always you know every single movie we've done we've raised our own money and we're kind of our own bosses so dealing with you know so many people and you know it's just it's just a different kind of thing but the, but now um you know TV is in a different place than it was 15 years ago. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, really the best stuff, I think, some of the best stuff ever is, is, is actually being done on television, you know? Yeah. Um, so, especially for horror, you know, mm-hmm. there, you know, there's so many really good kind of horror or horror-based shows out there. So, we think, you know, it's a really great opportunity for us to dive in and really kind of, you know, hone in on the characters and stay with characters for a long time and, um, and all my experiences on television have been really, really positive. So that's kind of what we're trying to do right now. We, we, you know, we're getting there. We, we, it seems like we always have a new idea every two or three months and we pitch it and we get close and every time we get closer and closer. So eventually, like we have right now, uh, um, a show that we are developing with, uh, uh Alejandro, uh, Bru- Bruges, who's the guy who did, uh, Juan of the Dead. Uh, yeah. Um, which, you know. I love that movie and the fact that it was shot in, in Cuba where, you know, I, I was born in Cuba. I left right. when I was two years old. And, um, so, you know, I'd always, it was always a dream of mine to go back and shoot something in Cuba or, you know, just be, go back. And, and, you know, I haven't been back since I was two. And, uh, um, you know, I met him on actually, actually met him on dust till dawn. We got along really well. And then him and Greg and I came up with this really cool, um, show that takes place in Cuba. And uh, so we're pitching it around, and it seems like you know, it seems like somebody's gonna bite. Maybe at least for to to write the pilot, and it's all in you know, it's all stages on TV. Yeah. Unless unless you're like David Fincher, <laughs> or or J J Abrams, um, so you got to write the pilot, and then they you know, then you can you know, sometimes they they either go they shoot the pilot or they go straight to series. We're hoping mm-hmm. that you know after the pilot we go straight to series. So, but you know, so we'll see what happens, and you know. Uh, and then, you know, I have a film that we've been uh, developing for about a year and a half now, and we're going out to actors right now. And I can't really say anything except it's a demonic possession movie. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, it's fun. Jamie, Jamie Nash wrote it, my oh, longtime yeah. collaborator. And uh, like I said, we're going out to actors now and probably shoot it in the spring. And, uh, you know, and then other than that, man, you know, I'm trying, trying to write. And uh, just trying to get off my lazy ass and, <laughs> and uh, you know, do something. My, my basement flooded this this summer. Oh. So it was a yeah, it was a, it was a crazy summer. It was fun, but it was a crazy summer. So I'm still recovering. My office is down in my basement. So yeah. And uh, so you know, but but yeah, I'm just trying to. My my biggest uh, opponent is me <laughs> and my laziness. Like I always I always tell my wife, I'm like, man, I could you know. I could be doing so much more if I wasn't so damn lazy. <laughs> but I, well, you know, it happens. that happens. Cool. Yeah, well, I'll I'll get out of this uh, day soon. Well, I'll tell you what, man. It'd be maybe really the, cool. Maybe the beard is slowing me down. I don't know. I, I, I don't. Maybe that's gonna motivate you. You know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe like, the yeah. beard is yeah, it needs to be longer <laughs> to give me more power. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, it's always always a pleasure to speak with you. I really appreciate the time, and uh, you know, really cool to get the updates. And you know, I'd love to see uh, I'd, I'd love to see a. Uh, one of your shows up there on uh, on Netflix next to like Hemlock Grove or Sense8. Uh, so it'd be really, really cool. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. All right. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, man. Anytime, man. Reach out. If you hear anything, whatever, uh, let's talk again, man. It's always a pleasure, brother. Awesome. Thanks a lot, bro. Take thanks, it easy. Man. All right. See ya. That's it for this issue of Dark Arts Theater. Thanks for your support, and I'll see you next time. We'll be